Hello everyone, it's Red with RedDragonLeo.com and today is Wednesday 5 11 11. Yes, the ritual number of 11 and 11 that the Illuminati love. And what do they do today? They sell off the market and actually let the charts work for once. Isn't that amazing? On top of that, just to let us know that uh, this really was an important day, they closed the S&P down uh, 1.11 percent, which was really nice of them to do that, just to give us the signal that uh, we're going to have uh, something significant happen. Um, as you can see right here, well, we went down 1.11 percent, uh, and this was on 1 uh, or 1111, 511 11, I should say, May the 5th, 11 11. So what does that mean? Does that mean that uh, this Friday, the 13th, unlucky Friday 13th, that the market is going to crash? I don't know, but uh, I definitely think it's going to tank pretty bad, whether or not it's a crash or not. Uh, you know, I'm going to consider a crash 500 points or more on the Dow, but uh, and that's just a small crash, of course, but I don't know if we're going to get that or not. Uh, I do know that uh, that this actually worked on a technical basis. Uh, even though the charts were pointing up, um, they could have went either way at that point. They could have continued up or or rolled over, and they rolled over, and probably primarily was because it was a rising wedge. Although we have seen these wedges break out time and time again and just keep going, like here. You know, you had a rising wedge. It went sideways and right here you thought it would break down nope when they do gap it up and then it went sideways some more up again and then it gapped it up again and then it finally broke it down so this one broke down a little faster than, than we thought it would I thought maybe they might just keep on running this up here um, to the fake print of 1388 on this on the um, uh, SPX which you know it's the it's the 138.86 print on the SPY so I thought maybe they might continue going up there. I really didn't know one way or another what I was going to do. Uh, but it definitely doesn't look that way now. It um, certainly looks like this is uh, is not going to be, um, you know, down here and then up, which would have been, um, I don't know, let's see, one, two, three, four, five waves or something. I don't know how you do that with Elliott Wave, but... So now it, it certainly looks like it's it's wave one down, wave two up, and wave uh, wave one of wave three is right here. And we hit this support and stopped at it. It's also this neckline support. I do think it's going to break tomorrow. Market looks very very weak. Look at where we're at here uh, below the 50 line on the RSI. It's giving strength to the bulls, and we've just now got a turn. Uh, on the ADX. So if this ADX gets going, we could have a wave three uh, down tomorrow or Friday. Um, just depends on how long it takes for this wave two to carve out. I don't think it's going to take too long. I think it's just going to be in the morning. You know, I think we'll see it uh, work its way back up and maybe ride this trend line right here or get above it a little bit. But I think it's going to, at before it's over with, it's going to fall down. So, if, if you look at this as a wave one down, a wave two up, and then down here a wave three, you can expect in that wave three a wave one, two, three, four, five. And, you know, whether or not that's a completion, you could call it a, at that point, if it's a completion, it'd be a, some type of ABC move. Or, you know, but uh, uh, it could just as well end at that wave three, then back up, and then take another wave five down, down here. And and hit this 1250 area that's that is very very possible it's hard to say at this point but um, when you look at the charts mainly the daily the key here to focus on here is that we are now pro approaching this uh, 50 line right here this did fail it tried to hook back up and it failed it rolled over and I think at this point we'll probably go down here well below 50 I don't think we're going to go below 20, but I think we're going to go somewhere in this area before we turn back up. 
It's what I think is going to happen. So look how high it is up here. It's it's a ten. So if you wanted to to um, go to get into bear territory completely, we'd want it to get below zero. I don't know whether or not that's going to happen or not. We may just go down here to the zero mark, go down here close to twenty, then start to curl back up. And that could take us uh, this week and, and next week, uh, some of next week. So, and if that's the case, then it could turn and go back up into the summer months of uh, June and July and August and hit the fake print and resume the uh, bull bull market. Um, but uh, so it's really undetermined at this point whether or not whether or not uh, we are starting you know primary wave three down I, I really don't think that that's the case yet simply because of the fact that we have uh, um, that 136 print at 138 I'm sorry 138 86 fake print out there still so I think that that's going to be hit before it's all said and done but it may be later this year so I, I did get a chance to listen to Lindsay Williams um, Today the it's an hour long interview here, and um, one of the key things that he pointed out, if I can find him here, find him here, give me a second here. I will put this up for you here. I'm gonna put this on the blog for you to watch and listen to it. It's an hour long. It's well worth it. You just pretty much listen to it. I don't. It's a bad picture of poor old Lindsay. He's 80 years old and he's cutting with his mouth open. And there's no video. <laughs> it's just a still picture of the whole time and just the audio. But one of the key things he says in this, silver is going to $75 to $100 an ounce. Gold is going to $3,000 an ounce. This is all planned. It... Um, the elite have done said that they are going to do it before 2010 is over with. Um, so get ready. It, uh, it, is, it is going to go up. So you can expect after this correction is over in the stock market. And we go down to the projected target of possibly here, 1250. If we go if we go down to that area in this sell-off in some type of you know wave three, wave four, wave five, and then resume back up into June, July, August, um, Lindsay is saying that that uh, he believes hyperinflation is going to come, and it is going to come this um, this June is what he is thinking about. And so, this June, possibly July, I believe is what he said in here. So, that is um, something to be, keep in mind. So, that means that the QE3 or 2.5, whatever, is already in the cards. They are going to destroy the dollar. That's why gold is going to go to $3,000 an ounce. So, that means the stock market will rally. It, it is not going to crash like we think it's going to crash. And I, I don't know about October with the next Legatus uh, pilgrimage. Uh, after that, I do think that uh, they will tank the market. They'll crash it. But as far as the summer months, when June comes, you're, you're going to expect Ben Bernanke to go out there and uh, stimulate the market again with more money and destroy the dollar. So that means we should rally. So you can... And I think that's supposed to end the 30th, I think, the end of June. So we should be going down and probably bottom around this 1250 is my estimate. And But, you know, we're just taking it one day at a time. But this is just thinking out ahead. And then we will turn and go back up and have a huge rally. Now, when that happens, I really think I'll probably uh, stay away from the SPY and and the the Russell and the Q's and all of it and just focus straight on the metals silver and gold and just go long on them because uh, by basically three thousand dollars an ounce I would I would estimate now Lindsay didn't say 
But I'd estimate he's talking about that probably by the end of 2012 and 75 to to $100 for silver because massive inflation. So when, when Bernanke does that, it will, uh, no doubt, uh, rally the stock market up again. And maybe that'll be the final blow before they finally tank it with World War III um, in October or something. That, that might be a possibility. You know, it's too hard to tell on that one. But, um, so what I'm looking for right here is this move down here, you could say it was similar to uh, probably, uh, I don't know where we're at in here, but let's see, probably more like this, this candle here, possibly. Uh, you know, so we could um, pop up a little bit in the morning. And then go down. I really don't think we're going to pop that very much in the morning. It's looking very weak. You got initial claims out. Thursdays are typically uh, bad uh, days anyway. They're typically down days. So I think whatever we get um, in the morning, I think that the, that's going to be it. Um, and so let's let's look at the short term charts on that to kind of give you an idea of what I'm thinking here. You can see here in the 60. We are oversold here, and we are curling back up. But understand, on the 60, the most common way for, for that I have seen it happen when, is that as it works its way up, the market goes lower, and that's where you get the positive divergence. The market's going lower, so you kind of get like right here, when you bottomed and you started to curl up. When this happened, that's when you had another move down, and then you got up here and you had another move down. So each time it's it's doing that, it's getting lower. So see here, when it bottomed, it was about here, and then and then there I believe was about there, and then this one here is the the low. So as it worked its way up, it it, it kind of did in three series. Now these three little moves, as it was putting in this uh, positive divergence here, these three pushes down were. Pr were probably uh, timed to the 15-minute chart getting overbought. So the 15-minute chart would would basically, like here, the 15-minute chart would get up here, roll over, boom, and that's when we take that another leg down. Then it would work back up, then roll over, boom, do it again. And here it is. We can actually look at it and see. And, and you can see that that's exactly the case. There was the first one, the second one, the third one, the three pushes down. And you can see it's exactly what happened. Uh, as basically it when it bottomed here it worked its way up there's your rally it fell back it fell down deeper worked its way up again fell down deeper again so this whole section right here I expect to be repeated here that's what I expect so whether or not we roll over here first in the morning and go down and possibly gap down and go below this supporting trend line and then come back up and test it is is hard to say. Uh, I think we're, we're either going to gap down below it or we're going to go up a little bit and then and then fall right through it. Either way, this is putting in a bear flag and I expect it to break. You can see the 30 minute chart right here is curling up. Now it's either if it gaps down in the morning from from the bull or bear flag, then you can expect this to kind of put in a lower uh, you know, a little histogram tower there that's a little bit uh, higher than this one. If it doesn't, if it if they try to push it up initially, it's not going to go very far over here. It's just going to go and roll over very quickly. And they might do that. Just depends. If they fabricate these, these um, um, you know, numbers on the, the initial claims, I believe is what's out tomorrow. If they do that, then you can kind of expect them to, uh, you know, pop it real quick. But I don't know if they're going to do that because, see, that gives that gives the bears a chance to get short and the longs a chance to get out. So they might not do that. They might just, you know, gap it down then come back up. So that would kind of trap some bears and then bring it back up real quick as this worked its way back up, finally rolled over. And if, they, if it did that, then you could expect it to go up into the the noon to two o'clock area time period before it finally peaked and then it would roll over into the close and I think it's going to set up for a Friday 
for um, a really big move down on Friday is what I think is going to happen. Um, so either way it goes, you'll be looking to get short. Either if it pops up in the morning, that's your opportunity to get short. Believe me, this won't last long. If it goes down, then you're going to have to probably sit on your hands and wait until you see it rebound because you can't expect it to rebound. If it rolls over, look what's going to happen. It's going to, if it rolls over, it's going to go down and it should quickly move back up. Look how far down we are, negative three, indicating that it needs to recycle back up here and get at least to the zero, le the zero level before it rolls back down. And, and it could go a little higher. It could go, you know, up here to one. But you really need to see this get up here a little bit before it really has another leg down to roll down. So it looks like it's pointing up in the morning. See, it's pointing here, up on the uh, full stochastics and it's and it's a negative three so it does look like it's got some juice to go up what i love to see is them to come out with some good uh, you know initial claims numbers whatever that the market likes so it will rally up so that i could get short again because then into the close i expect it to or actually probably by noon or one or two somewhere in that time period i've expected to to get overbought and roll over and so i expect this to roll up here and and, and roll over as well. See, this is down at negative 2.5. And, you know, we're going to expect this to come back up a little bit before it rolls back down again. If it rolls back down again, you know, maybe it rolls all the way down here to negative 5. And um, same thing here with this. You know, I said that we could go all the way down to negative 10 uh, if we really have some really selling. And I, I think that's what it's looking like we're going to do. So maybe we start to curl back up here. I don't know if it's going to make it back up to zero or not kind of doubt it. Uh, I think it's going to go back up a little then just, just fall right back down. Uh, I don't think there'll be enough time. But So, you know, you go down and back up and then we're going to end up going down to this 7.5 to negative 10 area and that should probably take us to this 1300 area. I don't know if we're going to get that Friday. I'm just saying that it's a possibility of, that, of this happening. And certainly there's a gap to be filled right there. So you kind of expect that to hit. Um, we may just pause and stop at 1320. Just depends. Depends on what they want to do. Say so they're still in full control of this. So far, everything uh, is working according to the latest Legatus uh, meeting. They have been selling the market ever since the meeting. I mean, you, basically, you look at it. It's, it started right here. The end of the meeting was right here. The gangsters got out right here. They got out. They sold all their silver and gold right there at the peak, and now they're tanking the silver and gold, and they will rebuy it back up uh, at, at some point. Probably, I'm going to guess, I think I'd seen 25 as a, as a support level uh, for silver if it goes that low. And it's a buying opportunity of a lifetime. So, you know, after this thing tanks, you, you just expect QE3. And into June, and you, you might as well just get long silver and ride it up to 75 to to 100 dollars, or gold up to 3,000 dollars, as Lindsay says. Uh, it is it is going there. It is definitely going there. So, um, so I hope that kind of gives you an idea what I'm expecting. I really I didn't get a chance to do a video yesterday. I had a computer crash and I had to fix it. I was up till 3:30. And, 3:30 in the morning working on it. I was, you know, last night, but I got it fixed. And, um, and so, anyway, not this computer, but another one. So, uh, I, I really didn't have a chance to do a video. But if I'd have done a video, I'd have probably said it was probably going to continue up the wedge a little bit higher. I didn't expect it to, to drop this quick. Uh, but hey, you know, it's not complaining. Uh, I was already short, uh, trapped short. Uh, from down here, so I did get out, but um, I'll, I'll re-enter as well. I got short a little bit too early. I think I was in here somewhere when I got short and had to ride this crap up. But anyway, um, you know, I, I would have probably said that we would went up a little higher uh, as they did this, as they did this massive run here. But this one got cut short, so it's just good. So, so again. If you look at this chart and examine it and compare the 60 and the 30 and the 15 and the daily, you can clearly see that uh, we we should tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 
we should either roll over here in the morning and then go back up if it's a possibility and then go back up throughout most of the day then roll over into the close or go up in the morning and then roll over by you know 11 I don't know and just have to I don't think it'd be very long 11 o'clock 12 o'clock I don't know but I would rather see it um, I would actually rather see it just pop down and then roll back up give it some positive divergence let this thing get back up here and then go short uh, somewhere between noon and two o'clock in the afternoon as this thing works its way up into this area and the 30 gets a chance to work its way up here and put in a small little top that would be ideal and let it run up here just a little bit kind of sideways and then and then let it tank into the close that would be ideal so you know that would that would indicate maybe a, a you know gap down and then a run back up and hit the, and back test this trend line and then that would be your shorting opportunity I do believe so uh, so that's your two possibilities either the gap down or run back up so you get short late in the afternoon or pops up in the morning and you pretty much initially get short uh, right off the bat as as the fake uh, or initial claims they just um, fizzle and die out very quickly and where would that be just wherever it goes I mean just look for it very quick in the morning I believe it would very quickly uh, uh, fade and just be jump on the board and let it happen so so anyway I will put the link here for for Lindsay for you guys to to, get, to go and listen to this audio interview it's an hour long it's uh, he just did it two weeks ago he's just an update on what's going on with uh, the elite they they told him they said we're going to take gold up to three thousand dollars an ounce and we're going to take um you know we're going to take uh, uh silver to 75 to um hundred dollars so you better get your uh you know get your gold and silver now i guess so anyway uh that's it gang i will see you guys on the blog and uh Keep your eyes out for fake prints too, because now's the time for them to show uh, some fake ticks as to where the downside bottom will be. I expect them to be putting them out there pre-market in the morning session before it opens. So keep your eyes out for that, and please uh, keep everyone informed and post it on the blog for me or email it to me. I'll post it, whatever. Thanks again, everyone. See ya.